Hello everyone. Welcome to this introductory video on discrete probability distribution. First, we are going to go over some fundamental terms related to probability distribution. In probability distribution, we will always see something called a random variable. When we say random variable, Random variable x is the numerical value associated with each outcome of a probability distribution. So when we perform any probability experiment, the outcome of the experiment is denoted by x and that is called the random variable. And when you look at the random variable, the random variable can be a discrete random variable or a continuous random variable. So when I say a discrete random variable, it's a variable if it has finite or countable number of outcomes. For example, number of calls made by a college professor to his student in a day. So here the number of calls a professor made to his student can be one or two or three or four or five and so on. It cannot be anything like fraction. 1.2 call or 1.3. It's not going to be something like that. It will only take the finite or countable number. So the random variable over here, the number of calls, that is the discrete variable because it will just take those finite countable whole numbers. But there are some random variables which are called the continuous variable and the random variable is called continuous if it has uncountable number of outcomes. For example, let's go back to the same example, the number of calls made by college professor, but here we are looking at it a little differently. Number of minutes spent by college professor while, call, while calling his student in a day. So if we uh, denote the number of minutes he spent in a call, then the, the value of X or the number of minutes can be 2.3 minutes or 2.4 minutes or maybe 5.2 minutes. It can be decimal values also. It is not something like two minute, three minute, four minute, but it can take everything in between. So you have uncountable number of outcomes. So such a random variable is called the continuous random variable. In this chapter, our focus will be on discrete random variable. When the a variable is a discrete random variable. We talk about the discrete probability distribution. So let's see what is discrete probability distribution. It consists of the values of a random variable and their probabilities. So what you will see is in the discrete probability distribution, your x, the random variable, will have the discrete values like 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on and you'll have the corresponding probabilities. So for each random variable, you'll have the corresponding probabilities. So this distribution is called the discrete probability distribution, but this will only be the discrete probability distribution if it satisfies two important conditions. The first one is sum of all probabilities in the sample space must be one. That is sum of Px or sum of probability of x must be equal to one. So if you add all this, if it is one, that is the first condition that it must satisfy. So here is one eighth, three eighth, three eighth, one eighth. So one plus three plus three plus one is eight. So eight over eight is one. So the first condition is true. The second condition is the value of each probability in the distribution must be between zero and one. So P of X should always lie between zero and one. So if you look at these probabilities here, one over eight, three over eight, three over eight and one over eight, all these probabilities, they are between zero and one. So because this probability distribution, which is given here, satisfies both conditions, this is a probability distribution. So this probability distribution is for the number of heads on tossing three coins. When you toss three coins, then you may get no heads, or one head, or two heads, or three heads. So this is the probability distribution, and this is the discrete probability distribution because your random variable is discrete, and here we have the probabilities. 
where sum of all probabilities is 1 and each probability over here is between 0 and 1. Let's take an example here. Suppose x is the number of heads while tossing two coins. What we are asked to do is we are asked to construct a probability distribution for the random variable and represent graphically. So here x is the number of heads. So you need to know what is your random variable. It is the number of heads while tossing two coins. So when you toss two coins, let's see what the outcomes are. When you toss the first coin, the outcomes can be head or tail. Now, when you get head on the first, when you get head on the first, you may get head on the second or tail on the second. When you get tail on the first, you may get head on the first and tail on the second. So all possible outcomes are, which is also called the sample is space, that will be head on the first, head on the second. So head, head, then head on the first, tail on the second, head on the first, tail on the second. The other possibility is tail on the first, head on the second, tail on the first, head on the second, and the last probability is tail on the first, tail on the second, tail on the first, tail on the second. And what we are looking at is our random variable x is the number of heads. So here you have two heads, here you have one head, one head, and here you don't have any head. So no head, one head in these two, and two heads. So our x or the random variable will be no heads, one head or two heads. And the corresponding probability will be, so there are four possible outcomes. Now, no head, here we don't have head, there is only one case out of four. So that is one over four, one over four. And then one head, here you have one head, here you have one head. So there are two possibilities out of four, two over four or half. And then two heads, this is the only option where we get two heads, that is one out of four. One out of four. Now here you can see sum of p of x, when you add one fourth plus one half plus one fourth, that is equal to one. And all these probabilities, they lie between zero and one. So p of x lies between zero and one. So p, sum of p of x is 1 and p of x lies between 0 and 1. So this is the probability distribution for the random variable x, where x is the number of heads while tossing two coins. Now, after we construct the probability distribution, we are asked to represent it graphically. The way we represent this graphically is we'll draw the bar diagram for x and p of x. So here, uh, when x equal to zero, the probability is one fourth. So when it is zero, the probability is one fourth. So the probability that you will get no heads is one fourth. Probability that you'll get one head is one half. So one head is one half. So we'll go to the height of half. And then the probability of getting two heads is one fourth. So two heads, one fourth. So this is the graphical representation of the probability distribution of X as the number of heads while tossing two coins. So we use the sample space or we use the tree diagram to create the sample space. We calculated the probability and we make the probability distribution. We verify that it is a probability distribution by using the two important checklist. And then we create or we represent the probability distribution graphically using histogram here. Next example, determine whether each of the following distributions are the probability distribution. So we have to check those two points. For example, in part A, let's see what we have. The first is we need to find the sum of 
all probabilities if you want to find the sum of all probabilities you can see here you have 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.1 0 0.4 0 0.3 so if you add this is 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.8 then it's 9 10 11 or 1.1 1 .1. so when you add all these it is 1.1 .1, which is not equal to 1 for the distribution to be probability distribution it has to satisfy both conditions it is just satisfying the first it is not satisfying the first condition so when it is not satisfying the first condition this is not a probability distribution so since the sum of all probabilities is not equal to one it's not a probability distribution now let's look at the second one here part b so the first is we look at the sum of all probabilities if we like look at sum of all probabilities let's find out what is this equal to so here you have one eighth plus one eighth which is one fourth one fourth plus one half is three fourth three fourth plus one fourth is four fourth or one okay it satisfies that condition and also when you look at all these probabilities we can see that all these probabilities they are between zero and one so p of x lies between zero and one so because it satisfies both conditions sum of p of x equal to one and p of x lies between zero and one this is a probability distribution so always remember in order to verify whether the given distribution is a probability distribution or not you have to check whether the sum of all probabilities is one or not and also you have to check whether these probabilities values are between zero and one or not if it satisfies both condition it's a probability distribution and if it does not satisfy both condition it's not a probability distribution one more example in the video this is going to be the last example fill in the p of x equal to x value so this two values here in the table below to give a legitimate probability distribution for the discrete variable x whose possible values are 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. These are the discrete random variable and the probabilities are given here. If this is a probability distribution, what are the values of these two? So what you know is if this is a probability distribution, you know that all these values, all the probabilities must be between 0 and 1. And some of all these probabilities must be exactly equal to 1. So if I add these three, you can see here, if I add these three, you can add these using calculator. So 0.14 plus 0.25 plus 0 0.20, that should be 0 0.59. So this is 0 0.59. So what I can say is probability when x equal to one, I don't know what is that value. Probability when x equal to two, I don't know what is that value. So probability when x equal to one, plus probability when x equal to 2 and then this probability is here which is 0 0.59 0 0.59 that is equal to 1 so this one x equal to 1 plus p x equal to 2 should be equal to so if i move this 0 0.59 to the other side or if i subtract 0.59 on both sides, it will be 1 minus 0 0.59. So the sum of these two probabilities, probabilities when x equal to 1 plus probability when x equal to 2 will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.59, which is 0 0.41. So what we have to do is we have to select these two values such that, okay, we have to select these two values such that the values are between 0 and 1 and the sum is equal to 0 0.21 so one possibility will be one possibility so that is you may write this 0 0.41 as 0 0.20 and 0 0.21 so when you add those two it is 0 0.41 and these two values are between 0 and 1 so you have to select any values you want it can be 0 0.40 and 0 0.01 still that will be 0 0.41 so it's up to you how you are going to select but the sum should be some of these two should be 0 0.41 and then 
the values must be between 0 and 1. So I can take this as 0 0.21. Hold on, I took that as 0 0.2. So the first value is 0 0.20 and the second is 0 0.21. So that is one possibility. So if you look at uh, this example, we make this a probability distribution. It must be a legitimate probability distribution. Meaning of that is all these probabilities must be between. 0 and 1 and when you add all this 0 0.20 plus 0 0.21 which is 0 0.41 and when you add all this it's 0 0.59 so 0 0.59 plus 0 0.41 which is 1 so it satisfies both condition of probability distribution the only thing that you have to remember is in problems like this you'll have multiple answers but it has to satisfy the given condition so i just gave you one situation and one answer for that. So in this introductory video, we look at the random variable, discrete random variable, continuous random variable, then we look at the discrete probability distribution. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching.